Now the earnings per share is a method that is used to review the performance of an entity. Now when you compare the earnings per share across the same segment, same sector, you come to know followed by the standard prescribes two methods of measurement per share. One would be the basic earnings per share. Good morning and welcome to the session 9 in unit 5 in International Financial Reporting Standards where we are going to talk about the earnings per share today. Now this comes under the Indian Accounting Standard AS33. So we are going to learn about what is this accounting standard all about. Now the earnings per share is a method that is used to review the performance of an entity. So naturally when you start seeing companies today performing in the share market as their movement goes up, as their performance goes up, what is the earnings that the investors would definitely like to know. So in that sense I would always say earnings per share really matters a lot. As the term itself denotes, it simply means determining the profit attributable to each share. So there are millions of shareholders for a company and each one of the shareholders would like to calculate the profit that they have earned per share by investing on that particular company. Such information is required to understand the return on investment for the shareholders and prospective investors. Any of the investor today would always like to look in the long term as in what money they would be able to earn in the coming years. So in that case, in that category, definitely these kind of information would provide a very big boon to the investors. Now moving further, what is the objectivity of this particular standard? The objective of the standard is to provide a common parameter for reviewing the performance of entities and compare it. Now when you look into the EPS, the earnings per share, that's a common parameter across all the shares that are listed in the Bombay Stock Exchange or in the National Stock Exchange. Now when you compare the earnings per share across the same segment, same sector, you come to know which share is performing better and where as an investor I would like to invest altogether. Also, the computation can be used for reviewing the performance of the entity between different periods altogether. So this becomes a very very interesting factor altogether. Why? Because people these days do not want to just go about and understand the risk factors. They want to see that what is the ideal factor, the ideal standard in which we would be able to make money, we would be able to see the growth aspect coming altogether. So that's why I would always say that this is an opportunity for each one of us to see how the earnings per share can be calculated across the different time segments, across the different lines altogether. So this is a very, very important standard of reporting as per the Indian Accounting Standards AS. 33. Now, moving further, the standard requires the entity to compute the earnings per share and then it must disclose the same as per the standard. So you need to first calculate, you need to tell the investors very, very clearly how much is the earnings per share. Further, the standard requires that if an entity presents both consolidated and separate financial statements as per the standard, then they must also present the earnings per share in both the statements separately. So the standard clearly listed out this factor that at any given point of time, if the entity or the organization takes the stand of presenting the balance sheet that is consolidated balance sheet separately and that of the financial statement separately then you need to give the earnings per share in both the statements so that the investors are completely aware about it followed by the standard prescribes two methods of measurement per share one would be the basic earnings per share the other would be the diluted earnings per share. So you have the EPS and the diluted EPS coming into picture. 
Now, moving further, when we are talking about computing of the earnings per share, a detailed formula is also there. And what is that formula? Profit or loss attributable to ordinary equity holders of the parent entity minus after tax and preference dividends altogether. So weighted average of the ordinary shares is always looked into it. Now, for example, let's take the Apple Limited as a profit of 5 crores. The number of ordinary shares outstanding is 10 lakhs. Then the EPS will be 50. It's quite a simple calculation. So if you are going to put here 5 crores into the factor divided by 10 lakhs which is the outstanding shares here all together so you would be able to get the amount as 50 rupees now that is what we are talking about in terms of earnings per share the numerator that is the profit or loss will be the profit from the continuing operations that the company has been doing and this is very much attributable to the parent entity or the profit and loss attributable adjusted after the tax amount, the preference dividends that has been paid. Now why this matters a lot is that when we talk about the earnings per share, let's also spend a moment here in terms of understanding the number of outstanding shares that are there, ordinary shares that are outstanding. Why? Because as per the profit, if the profit is large and the number of shares that is outstanding is smaller, then automatically the earning per share will be on the higher basis. But if the company has floated too many shares and there are large number of shareholders available in the market, then the earnings per share will reduce because it needs to be shared across the so many investors who are available in the market. So in both sense, a company needs to understand how many people have invested in their company, what is the shareholding base pattern altogether. So in all that sense, I would always say that earnings per share definitely makes a whole lot of sense altogether. So whenever we look into the adjusted factors of the earnings, this will help us to tell how much is the earnings that we are able to see per company. Now, the diluted earnings per share, this is also a very, very important factor which we are talking about. The diluted earnings per share are computed by adjusting the profit and loss of ordinary share for the effects of all dilute potential, dilutive potential of the ordinary share. Now, the numerator will be the profit or loss as computed for the basic earnings per adjusted value after tax effect or any dividends or any other items that relate to the dilutive potential ordinary shares that are detected in computing basic earnings per share interest in that period to the dilutive potential. So we need to understand the dilutive potential of every share in a company so that that gets recognized down the lane. And this diluted earnings per share also matters a lot for most of the companies. Why? Because that will actually tell in, in a long run, even on a liquidated position, how much is the share, how much is the earning that we are able to see. Now, moving further, let's also try to understand in the diluted, the denominated is a weighted average number for the ordinary shares as per the computation of earnings per share. The weighted average number of shares would be issued on conversion of all dilute potential ordinary shares into the factors that is potential ordinary shares into ordinary shares which matters a lot in terms of calculating potential ordinary shares will be dilutive only when their conversion to ordinary share reduces the earnings per share or increases the loss per share from the continued operation. So there will be this dilutive process only in case of loss or only in case when the potential conversion is going to happen. That is, you know, when I see that it reduces, the number of ordinary share reduces and the loss starts going up 
on the higher version altogether. Now, moving further, we are going to talk about what are the retrospective adjustments permitted. So, where are the adjustments permitted due to capitalization, bonus issue, or share split? If the number of ordinary or potential ordinary outstanding share increases or decreases as a result of reverse split, calculation of basic and diluted shares can be adjusted. So, if there is going to be a capitalization issue, a bonus issue or share split coming into the factor, yes, we do understand about the adjustments and the adjustments are accepted, are promoted as per the need altogether. Now, moving further, if these changes occur, as in the post reporting period but before the financial statements are approved for the issue then the per share calculations for those or any prior period of financial statements presented shall be based on the number of shares so that is very very important the fact that per share calculations reflect such changes in number of shares shall be disclosed in addition that in addition, the basic diluted shares earning per share of all periods shall be presented, adjusted for the effects of error and adjustment resulting from the changes in accounting policy accounted for retrospectively. Now, that is very, very important for all of us. Why? Because there are times there are changes where we would be looking into it in terms of growth, in terms of development altogether. So this is very, very important for all of us when we are looking in for changes, when we are looking in for some value additions in terms of presenting the financial statements. Now, how are the earnings per share to be presented? An equity shall present basic diluted earnings per share with equal prominence. Underline that word equal prominence because you have to give equal weightage. You cannot just keep on showing only the colorful picture saying that my company share is performing very well and we are doing very well. No, that will not be accepted. We want you to show the perspective very, very clearly in terms of what is happening and how it is happening. An entity shall present the basic and diluted earnings even if it is negative, let it be negative. That's not a problem. But let's not hide the documentation from the investors. Let them show them a very clear picture saying that this is what my company is doing. Probably in the coming uh, factors, in the coming years, I would be able to perform better. So it is mandatory that we show what has been happening altogether. Followed by what are the disclosure requirements? The entity shall disclose the following. What is that they're going to disclose? The amount used as per the numerators in calculating basic and diluted earnings per share and reconciliation to the profit and loss. One, the number two, the weighted average number of ordinary shares used in the denominator in calculating basic and diluted earnings per share reconciliation, it, which is very, very important again. Why? Because when we start doing this, when we are starting into the calculating factor, the earnings per share, the reconciliation starts working on very, very clearly the weighted average number of ordinary shares used for the denominator in calculating basic and diluted value shall also be reconciled in the denominator. So these all these factors have to be calculated, have to be looked in in terms before we start reporting it. Now, the instruments, if there are any instruments that are issuable that are potentially dilute or any other basic earnings also has to be reported. Description of ordinary share transaction or potential ordinary share transactions have also to be given there. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that this session was of a great help and resource to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will be seeing more about the financial transactions and reporting standards. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed, and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.